This movie is an excerpt from a longer lesson and you can find out more evidence-based information about childbirth physiology and practice in my blog, podcast, books, courses, mailing list and membership. Please see the links in the description and subscribe to this channel to be notified of new content. Let's use the analogy of birth as a symphony. The nervous system and brain are the conductor, the hormones are the musicians in the orchestra, the body is the musical instruments dependent on the musician's hormones for working, and the rhythm and pattern of the physiological process is the music or the symphony. And the external environment, so the incomings through our sensory system, can either support the conductor or disrupt the conductor. So if you mess with the conductor, your musicians are not getting the correct signals and the music will be out of tune or not in sync. You need the full orchestra working together. Now, before the conductor can conduct the symphony of labour, the instruments need to be prepared, so tuned by the musicians, the hormones. We need to create the physiological conditions for the labour process to happen. And preparation for labour takes place in the final four to six weeks of pregnancy. These changes take place in parallel alongside each other. So what I'm about to describe to you is not in the order in which it happens, because it's all happening together. Let's look at the baby to begin with. The baby's adrenal glands produce increasing amounts of cortisol towards the end of pregnancy, which initiate changes in the baby's body to prepare them for labour and extra uterine life. These changes include the upregulation of epinephrine and norepinephrine receptors in the lungs and heart that prepare the baby to adapt to the normal stress of the labour process. Increased production of surfactant in the baby's lungs allow the baby to open their lungs and breathe immediately after birth. The thyroid gland matures, which helps to clear fluid from the baby's lungs and supports the baby's ability to regulate their temperature after they're born. The baby's gut and metabolism are also prepared so that the baby is able to utilise their fat stores during labour and in the early postnatal period. And significant brain development also takes place in these final weeks of pregnancy, which further support the brain hormone systems of the baby. At the same time as increased cortisol, the adrenal glands also send increasing amounts of DHEAs, a chemical precursor for estrogen, to the placenta. The placenta then converts the DHEAs into estrogen and releases it into the mother's circulation. This is the baby's message to their mother that they will be ready to be born soon. A message to the conductor to prepare the orchestra. And this increased oestrogen works with other hormones to prepare the mother's body for labour in a number of ways. The pregnant uterus needs to make structural changes before it can contract and pull the cervix open during labour. So the uterus needs to prepare to contract and the cervix needs to prepare to open. Oestrogen increases the number of oxytocin receptors in the mother's uterus, brain and breasts. Prostaglandins and inflammation act on the receptors to upregulate them so that they become very sensitive to the oxytocin circulating in the mother's blood. Oestrogen initiates a shift in the balance of prostaglandin receptors in the uterus. Some of these receptors stimulate the uterus and others relax the uterus. And prostaglandins are also made in the amnion layer of the amniotic sac, with larger amounts in the amniotic fluid as labour gets close. From the amnion, these prostaglandins can act on the uterine muscle to stimulate contractions via the prostaglandin receptors. Oestrogen also prepares the uterus for coordinated contractions by electrically connecting uterine muscle cells. Let's take a look at one of the other important hormones, which is progesterone. If you look at the progesterone icon, you can see the arrows face inwards. This is because progesterone is the hormone of introspection, of focusing inward. It is also the hormone of sustaining a pregnancy and levels of progesterone rise during pregnancy and remain high because throughout pregnancy, progesterone, along with other factors, blocks the ability of the uterus to contract it sustains the pregnancy. However, as the oestrogen rises, along with the increasing maternal cortisol, this contraction blocking action of progesterone is deactivated. But for a baby to be born, we need more than just contractions. The uterus needs to be able to open 
and the cervix is firm and closed during pregnancy to keep the baby in. And it needs to change its structure so that it is softer and stretchier and able to be pulled upwards by the contracting uterus. This process is sometimes called ripening and it happens slowly over several weeks. And it's a complex transformation involving many chemicals and hormones, including prostaglandins from the amnion, which act on the cervix to increase water and elastin content and to decrease collagen. The mother's body also prepares for uterine contractions by activating spinal cord pain relieving pathways in preparation for the labor and birth process. By the end of pregnancy, the mother and baby have made lots of physiological changes to set the scene for the symphony of labor.